Hey guys, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles Resolve. In the last episode, we finally managed to finish the investigation, at least of the first day? I don't really know if there are several days in this case, but uh, nevertheless, we finished the investigation, maybe of the first day, we'll see. And now we are here at the Old Bailey, starting the new trial. So let's just get into it. It's with 23rd October at 8.52 uh, a.m. Sorry, at the Old Bailey and the defendant's antechamber. I can't believe it's been six months since I was last allowed to work in court. And now here I am, back at the Old Bailey. Ah, mi mi Mr. Narodo! Good morning, Professor Hairbrain. I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. The atmospheric pressure in here is off the charts. I've never felt anything like it. It's it's crushing me. I feel it every time I'm here. That gravity. Well, this is Britain's highest court. But are you telling me it's fitted with some kind of device that can actually control air pressure? I think it's probably all in the mind. Ah, oh, yes. Well, uh, you won't let me down, will you, Mr. Naruto? I'm counting on you today, Star, to save my life, to save the secret of my super high voltage and stand this Genesis machine from being made public. Yes, I understand. I know what I have to do. I have to establish that the explosion two days ago was nothing more than an unfortunate accident. Well, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, really. Just, just as well prevail. My commiserations, Mr. Narihudo. You appear to have been lumbered with a most tiresome case here. Mr. Sholmes, I didn't expect to see you here. That was very mean, Runo, leaving me alone at home with Hurley. It took me at least an hour to wake him. Oh, 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 uh, is it? Are you? Herlock Sholmes! Indeed, sir, I am here. Herlock Sholmes! Oh, I've heard all about your exploits even whilst living in Germany! Oh yes, Rand's magazine is on sale in Germany too! This month's installment was sublime! Your deduction in the Adventure of Silver Blaze was wonderful! Ah yes, a memorable case indeed. It concerned a snake, I seem to recall. No, that wasn't the speck of bat. Well, thank you for coming. I do appreciate the support. I'm sorry to disappoint you, my dear fellow, but I'm afraid I can't stay. Oh, I've urgent business at Madame Tuspelt's. You mean your waxwork job? No, no, the waxwork abduction, of course. Madame has engaged my services. Ah, oh, so you're trying to get the bottom of that ransom note, are you? The week's wages depend on it, as does the safe return of the waxwork, naturally. So, just alone that waxwork stuff leads me to believe that there is going to be a second day of an investigation. But we'll see. As such, I intend to give it my undivided attention. Oh, well, never mind then. I understand. Of course, with my skills of observation and reasoning, resolving the matter will be e as easy as proverbial... Proverbial pie. I shall return forthwith. For until I solve the case, I shall have no money to afford a pie of any description. Oh, then you must absolutely give it your full attention, Hurley. Quite, Iris, quite. But life is riddled with irony, you know. Whenever I give something my full attention, I have a quite unsatiable desire for a pie. One of the universe is under intractable mysteries, you might say. Oh yes, quite, definitely, absolutely, I totally understand. Is, is someone a little starstruck? I wish you the very best of luck, Professor Herbray. Oh, uh, oh, why, thank you. Before I depart, Mr. Nerodo, a word in your ear, if you please. What's this about? As you have remarkably little grounding in science, I feel I ought to inform you. As compelling as this super-high voltage instantaneous kinesis hypothesis may be, a 
practical Im implementation such as was attempted by the professor at the Great Exhibition is quite impossible. But, but the professor said the demonstration was a success? Yes, it would appear that he fervently believes it was. I've read Professor Bunnybrain's paper about it too, Runa, and I have to say... I'm sure it can't be done. It could barely be done theoretically, let alone practically. So he's completely barking up the wrong tree? But how could an experiment that had no possibility of succeeding in fact succeed? That's contradictory. And it's that contradiction that will be at the heart of the trial, I have no doubt. What's that supposed to mean? Now, I must hurry along. I wish you the best of luck, my dear fella. See you later, Hurley! Well, it looks like you're on your own today, Runa. But chin up, you can do it! Oh, what about you, Iris? Oh no, I'm afraid I can't help. I have something I need to do. I see. Hey, it's going to be a big surprise for you when you find out what it is. Huh. That sounds ominous. Council for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. Make your way to the courtroom at once. We're on our way. Oh, we are on our own. That. Oh, that's. Oh, I, I don't like that. Having an assistant by my side is just. It's just better. It doesn't make me feel so low. Whatever. An experiment that the laws of sciences can, can't possibly succeed. And a scientist who's convinced that it did. That's the riddle you have to unlock here, Ryunosuke. That's the key to this case. <coughs> oh, well. We are going to unlock it, hopefully. <laughs> 23rd October, 9.10 a.m. The Old Bailey. Poor troop. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are setting today for the public trial of Professor Albert Herbray. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and the defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. The defense is... The defense is ready, my lord. I'm six months out of practice, and what's more... Oh, that hurts. I'm without Susato san today. Oh, that hurts so much. Oh, is it just my imagination, or does the air in here feel even more oppressive than usual? So, I must say I recollect the victim of this case all too well, Mr. Odai Asman. Mr. Asman was well known as a financier. Though that was merely a front for his diverse criminal activities. It was only a month ago that the man appeared in court prosecuted by you, Lord von Zeeks. But the jury unanimously found him not guilty. Because every member of the jury had been bribed by the sound of it. These powerful London criminals are prepared to go to extreme lengths to keep their freedom. But two days ago, on 21st October, Mr. Asman met his end. The work of the Reaper, was it? If that is how your lordship would describe the wide retribution. But the fact remains that Mr. Asman's death was a direct result of the actions of the accused, Professor Habray. Very well then. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have been selected at random to represent the will of the people. Are the six of you ready to fulfill your societal duty? I'm most gratified to have been selected to carry out this important civic duty, my lord. To have a man's fate in the palm of one's hand? Oh gosh, oh golly, it sends shivers down my spine. Science experiments, magic, conjuring tricks, courtroom trials, all are nothing more than performances. Any spurious scholar that defies the reputation of science deserves to hang. Um, we have to listen to what's said on both sides of the fence and then, then settle on one, that's it, isn't it? 
That's uh, the the policeman from. Oh, them. Was like this in my day. Was like this at all. The policeman from the wax museum. That's that's. Oh, he says this here. The police killer Ottoman uh, Ottoman lookalike again, and he's as exhausted as ever. It seems. Now, as I'm sure you are all aware. The incident we are here to judge today tragically took place at the Great Exhibition, shortly after its opening. Though the death toll could have been far worse, with the exception of the victim, no one was killed. Nevertheless, the dream of the sights being exhibited rapidly turned into nightmare for the spectators. A tragic turn of the and as such, the eyes of all London, no, of the whole world, will be on this trial. It is our duty to reach a swift and just conclusion, I feel. So, your opening statement, please, Lord Lindsay. At the heart of this incident is the technology never born before demonstrated anywhere in the world. One of science's latest developments, I take it. The government is keen to capitalize on the Great Exhibition to improve Britain's technological advantage. The technology being demonstrated by the accused was described as super high voltage instantaneous kinesis. Good lord! It's designed to dissemble a human subject using extremely high voltage electricity and beam them instantly to another location where they are subsequently reassembled. Is, is such a thing even within the realms of possibility? Well, I don't believe it, that's for sure. Disassembling people with electricity, my goodness, how shocking. Oh, the whole idea is absurd. My hypothesis, the hypothesis would never stand up to scrutiny. Sir, I believe you are a fellow of the Royal Society, are you not? An expert in your field. I am, and my word on the matter can be considered final. Instantaneous kinesis is poppycock! So this expert and Mr. Shaw's are in agreement. It's impossible. What is the prosecution's view on the matter? The prosecution would assert that the accused's instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a success. What? What's right? What? Order, order! The professor's hypothesis is currently under investigation by the British government. If it is deemed to have merit, a substantial research grant would be made available. The accused made use of the invention built on his new hypothesis to take Mr. Asman's life. In order to be the sole benefactor, of the ground. But, but... This disastrous demonstration was no accident. It was carefully designed from the outset to end the life of the victim. Ooh. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, I have to take a sip. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Lord von Zeeks. The prosecution's stance is clear. But you will now bring forth witnesses to substantiate your claims. Gladly, my lord. Bailiff! Show the first witnesses to the stand. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. I was on duty at the demonstration on the day in question and in charge of the following investigation. Albert Herbrain, a scientist! in Germany in recent years, correct? Yes, yes, that's right! Oh, my... Uh, uh, my cables got, got tangled up, sorry. 
After graduating from university in Britain, I went to work in Germany and made an amazing discovery. Which is what brought me back. I had to demonstrate my incredibly hypothesis at the Great Exhibition. What you demonstrated was incredible, all right. An incredible explosion. But the science! The science was a success! The instantaneous kinesis worked! I, everyone saw it. they must have done! Yes, there was a terrible accident, but... The demonstration of my hypothesis was a success! Well, that much is undeniable, as shown in this photograph. Taken by the forensic investigation team. This was taken in... This was taken inside the Crystal Tower, I take it. The centerpiece of the exhibition, no less. That's right, my lord. Seems the victim rammed straight into it. <coughs> hmm, I see. Very well. Submit the photograph as evidence. The photograph of the victim has been entered in the court record. The photograph of the victim, a photographic print of the victim taken after he had ostensibly been beamed to the Crystal Tower. It shows an apparent stab wound to the chest. As the courts heard, the victim of the incident was Mr. Odai Asman. There have been a number of allegations made against the man, but putting them aside for the time being, he was the man who financed the research for the experiment and the demonstration itself. I see. So to summarize the situation, the defendant is accused of taking the life of the man who funded his work. Would that be correct? Exactly. But couldn't it be that the explosion was caused by some malfunction in the apparatus used for the demonstration? That's right! That must be it! My splendid machine! My poor splendid machine! You saw it yesterday, didn't you? We can't even examine the wreckage thanks to the Special Dispensation of for Scientific Equipment Act. Whoa! The wreckage! The wreckage! But that being the case, how can the facts be established? How can it possibly be determined whether this was an accident or a deliberate and malicious act? Extremely simple, my lord. I beg your pardon? Isn't that right, witness? What? Well, well, sorry, me? No, your neighbor. Yes, sir. It was murder, plain and simple. Anyone could state that with complete certainty. What? How can he possibly think that? Thank you, Inspector. I think we had better proceed to formal testimony. You will explain to the court on what grounds you claim this experiment to have been a front murder, a front for murder. I'm really curious what he's going to say. Witness testimony. A front for murder. The cause that was crashing through the crystal tower had a broken neck. I, I made a minor miscalculation in the angle of the beam projection, that's all! That was my, that was my mistake! But the post-mortem re report... But the post-mortem re... Uh, post-mortem examination, sorry guys, revealed another injury, a fatal wound. There was a lesion in his chest where he'd clearly been stabbed by something sharp right in the heart. So the victim was killed before he went anywhere, and this fella's the only one who could have done it. Huh, okay. An extraordinary business. In addition to suffering a broken neck, the victim was stabbed in the heart? Information I would really like to have heard from someone other than the judge. The coroner says death would have been all but instant from a wound like that. You could say, in fact, that the victim was killed twice by the accused. No, no, and no, that couldn't be further from the truth! I fear the experiment plan document that was submitted to the secu security team. The victim stood himself inside something called the birdcage, ready to be beamed instantly. To the second level of the crystal tower, about 25 yards away. The experiment did not go according to plan, however. As the machine was put into operation, there was a large explosion. The blast caused the beam's transmitter to point higher than intended. 
accordingly, a kinesis resulted in the bird cage materializing in midair, from where it subsequently fell, crashing through the glass of the crystal tower's large round window. My word! One assumes the victim's neck was broken upon impact with the tower then. I'm, I'm so sorry! I didn't mean for this to happen! The machine was just too powerful! But honestly, really, I swear, it was just an accident, a terrible accident! Unfortunately, that excuse can't save you. No, not considering the sharp murder weapon that pierced the victim's heart. M murder weapon? What are you saying? This is the autopsy report submitted by the corona. The prosecution would like it entered into the court record. Your request is granted, counsel. The autopsy report has been entered into the court record. Autopsy report. The autopsy report from of the victim, Mr. Asman. His neck was broken from the impact of a violent fall and he was stabbed in the chest with a sharp object. I was there in person, you know? I saw the whole ludicrous performance. And the only other person in the stage with Mr. Asman was a disgraceful excuse for a scientist. Then really, by all accounts, it must have been him. Hmm, hard to think otherwise, really. Very well, counsel for the defense. Proceed with the cross-examination, please. Oh, yes, my lord. I need to focus here. It's been a while. Cross-examination, front of uh, front for murder. But before we do that, I would like to have a look at things. Autopsy report, Corona Courtney Sive. Courtney Sive, whatever. Details of victim name, Odie as, ma Odie as man, male, age 47, nationality British. Time of death, 21st October, around 2.20 p.m. Cause of death, hemorrhage of a wound to the chest that pierced the heart. Inflicted by a sharp implement. Additional observation. A, bo a broken vertebra, most likely resulting from impact after a sudden fall from considerable height. Hmm. Okay. And we also have this. So this is the stab to the heart. Hmm. Okay, right now we can't really make out anything the other things we've already seen so let's start cross examining the corpse that went crashing through the crystal tower had a broken neck hold it are you suggesting that's because he fell from a considerable height exactly which is high which highlights something else about this whole rum business what's that the fact that the instantaneous kinesis itself was a success oh after the explosion, the cage with the fellow inside suddenly appeared out of nowhere in midair. So although the experiment ended in disaster, the so-called instantaneous kinesis did actually occur. Remind us, Professor, what was the cause of the fatal disaster? I, I made a minor miscalculation in the angle of the beam projection, that's all, that was my mistake! Hold it! So, the angle of the projection is critical, is it? And you calculated it yourself, personally. Absolutely! The calculation is far too complicated for anyone but me to carry out. Only, you got it wrong, didn't you? Yes, that's right! That's the point! The calculation is so complicated that even I can make a mistake! Do people fall for their brazen confidence? I should try. I, I took into account the subject's height and weight! The wind direction, the ambient temperature. I considered every possible vari variable, so I just don't understand how this could have happened. Obviously, then, you had to include the white of the clothes Mr. Adam was wearing at the time, I suppose. Ah! Crackling comments! The answer should have been three! So much for safety first. The three must be for safety third. But the post-mortem examination revealed another injury, a fatal wound. Hold it! Another fatal injury, you say? That doesn't make any sense! I didn't think I'd have to spell this out, but here we go. 
Just because there were two fatal wounds doesn't mean I'm saying the victim had two lives to lose, does it? Two right. Obviously, at first, we thought the bloke had died due to his spine snapping in half as well. But you're saying that's not the case? You'll get your answer once I've finished my fish and chips, if you don't keep butting it every few seconds. But we all know that's a bottomless bag. Victim plummeted 30 feet into a glass tower, but would be reasonable to assume that as the cause of death. Right, that's what we all thought. But it was a red herring, wasn't it? There was a, le a lesion in his chest where he'd clearly been stabbed by something sharp right in the heart. Hold it! The defense knew nothing of this crucial information. The prosecution received this report from the forensic investigation team only this morning. That was the first we knew of it as well. I can only apologize for the impossibility of informing the defense. Sarcastic and insincere. Thanks. So, what was the nature of his sharp object? Among the accused tools that were in use at the demonstration, one is of particular interest. This. Oh yes, that would appear to be some kind of screwdriver, wouldn't it, Captain? Oh! There, there he is! My trusty little companion! Andrew! Andrew? Of course. Oh, do you know each other already? He's one of my dear friends, like all my tools. I've named them all, you know. They're one big happy family. Andrew is my flat-headed screwdriver, of course. His brother Michael is a crosshead. Well, it would appear that your beloved Andrew has a red stain on his chest. Oh, that, that isn't... It's blood, beyond all reasonable doubt. No. Oh, but, and that's not all. The long, sharp shape of his Andrew fella is completely consistent with the victim's wound. What? What? Order, order. The court will enter this friend of the de defendant as evidence. The screwdriver has been entered into the court record. Professor Hairbrain's trusty screwdriver that, had a, that he's named Andrew. <laughs> there are traces of blood at the tip and it matches the shape of the victim's wound. So one of Professor Hairbrain's tools is the murder weapon. Great. So the victim was killed before he went anywhere, and this fellow is the only one who could have done it. Hold it! What grounds do you have for saying that? Ha! Do you really need to ask? There were only two people on the on the public experimentation stage in front of the whole crowd. The victim, Mr. O'Diasman, and the accused Professor Harbray. And we know for certain that before the experiment, the victim was alive. That's right, I saw him with my own eyes! Furthermore, following the explosion and kinesis, nobody went anywhere near the body. In other words, only someone else on the stage, at the stage where the victim could possibly have done it. Uh huh. We're gonna look around and we're gonna pursue me, of course. <laughs> Professor Harbrain, do you have some information that may be relevant here? Professor! Oh, sorry, sorry! I was just calculating the optimum coefficient, coefficient of electrolysis to separate molecules in the human body. And the witness stand is the best place for that? It seemed as though y you might have something to say about Inspector Gregson's last remark. Oh, 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 yes, yes, that's right, of course. <coughs> Sorry, guys. He just said that nobody else could have done it, did he? Didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Who else could have stabbed the victim, huh? I don't know, but there's no way that I could possibly have stabbed Mr. Asman as you say. Huh? Explain, please, Professor. Of course, this cold-hearted policeman may not be aware, I suppose. 
But humans are warm-blooded mammals with blood running continu continuously through their wings. I had heard. Then surely you see, if I plunged something the size of Andrew into the man's chest, the whole stage would have been bloodbath. No, a blood swimming pool. Uh. But thousands of Londoners were watching me at the time. And yet no one of them claims to have seen a swimming pool of blood. Well, no, I suppose not. You see, not one. Mm, true, I didn't see anything like that. Well done, Professor. That was a great counter-argument. Order, order. Pray for Gilbert's courtesy if I save a drop from my hollow chalice to accompany my old friends at Ducey. Here's to you. Oh, you're too kind, Barrack, but I'm really not a patch on you. No, you're not. No? You've neglected to mention one crucial possibility. I have? A particular situation in which very little bleeding will result from a stab wound. Ah, of course. Inspector, enlighten the court, please. Yes, sir. Where are they going with this? Very well. You will amend your formal testimony now, Inspector Gregson. The weapon the victim was stabbed with must have been left in his body whilst he was beamed through the air. Hmm. We're gonna press that, of course. Hold it! Why would you think that, Inspector? Within any wound, it's only when you pull the weapon out that profuse bleeding occurs. Whilst it's still lodged in the body, it acts as a stop of sorts, for for what for want of a better word. I I see. You don't need a medical degree to be aware of this fact. It's common knowledge for any investigator. Ugh, where is this at some where you need her? If you ask me, this bloke masked that he w uh, what he was doing from view with his body before stabbing asthma in the chest. Then he beamed the victim off the stage with his fancy device, and the screwdriver still where he planted it. I I would never do such a thing! Not to my precious tools! I would never use them for such dirty work! You only use tools for their intended purpose! That's common knowledge for any scientist! The fact remains, the lack of blood at the scene can easily be explained. As the prosecution has demonstrated. So that's all the testimony I have to work with. I had no idea the victim had been stabbed. It changes everything. Can Zeke keep that to himself until now on purpose? To gain the advantage? Oh well, I suppose all I can do is press the witnesses for as much new information as possible. Well, we already did that, but guys, we have breached the half hour mark already. So if you want to know what we are going to do about this cross-examination, you'll have to tune in next time for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Resolve. See you then.